Hi everybody, I'm Andy Murray from What Culture Wrestling. And I'm Adam Nicholas from What Culture Wrestling, here to bring you all of today's wrestling news, including Brock Lesnar not interested in a return to the UFC, and Chris Jericho has suggested that NXT should pack their bags and go home to somewhere else, because they're never going to beat AEW. And on top of that, I've got some notes from Tony Khan's all-out media call from last night, including his thoughts on Double or Nothing kicking the crap out of WrestleMania. <laughs> But first of all, we're going to talk Brock Lesnar. This is the news. I still don't have that Wilborn flair, but he's not here today. So what are you going to do? Um, Tony Khan had an interesting question uh, during this media call, hyping up all out, answering questions from various people from various sites. And Nick Hausman of WrestlingInc.com asked during the podcast if AEW had any interest in signing Brock Lesnar or if they'd spoken to Brock Lesnar. Lesnar is of course a free agent at the moment. His WWE contract has expired and he's free to do whatever the hell he wants to do. Now Brock is free to do whatever the hell he wants to do regardless of whether he's under contract anyway. But I digress. Um, Tony Khan had an interesting answer for this. He said he couldn't say anything. He declined to comment. Uh, he basically said that the, he cannot talk about this at this time. But he went on, he put Brock over pretty huge. Uh, he said he'd admired his work for many, many years. And he said that basically people don't talk enough about how Brock is an all-time great in this sport. However, at this time, I cannot possibly say anything on the matter. Now, of course, this has sent people mental, man, because... You, you naturally go to, well, if he's no commenting, if he wasn't going to sign him, he would say no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't necessarily think that that's the case. I think that Tony Khan, through these media calls and through his tenure as AEW president, has evolved into a very good salesman mm. who understands how to get people talking like we're doing on this video today. So I think definitely there was an element of showmanship here. I think he probably knew exactly what was going to come of this. And I'll talk about this element of, of Tony later on in the video. Um, but at the same time, man... You know, Brock would be a very expensive acquisition and I would expect him to show back up in WWE. I would be amazed if he didn't go anywhere else. Tony Khan's dad is a billionaire, however. And while uh, the Khan family aren't exactly going to go throw all of this Scrooge McDuck stuff at AEW and just, you know, lose millions and millions of dollars every single time out, there's a chance. It's a 1% chance, I think, but there is a chance. Hey, there's always a chance when it comes to Brock Lesnar, and if you've got the money, he's certainly going to listen to you. And they do have money. I do feel, though, that Vince McMahon would be so desperate to make sure that doesn't happen. That, and I'm sure this was, might have even been a quote from Meltzer, is that they'll just throw any amount of money at Brock to make him stay, yeah. essentially. Like, give him an offer. Make him an offer, he can refuse. And then he ends up having to come back to uh, WWE. Although, fascinating stuff is, and I think you're right, I think Tony Khan isn't daft. He knows that Brock Lesnar is a free agent. He knows that having this conversation gets him into the headlines and therefore gets AEW into the headlines right before All Out. The man is a savvy little businessman, I think it's fair he to is, say. Man. But shall we continue talking about Brock Lesnar? Because as we may have mentioned yesterday, or I say may, we definitely did, we reported that Brock Lesnar and was, well, potentially being eyed up by Dana White for a huge super fight in the UFC against John Jones, which obviously has been talked about for many, many years at this point. But with Brock being a free agent, the chance was on the table. Well, it seems, according to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer, that that might not be the case because this, obviously, as we know there, Tony Khan, very interested. That would be a fantastic op opportunity and certainly an intriguing option. But it seems UFC off the table because... He says that Brock has not reinserted himself into the USADA drug testing pool, which is obviously kind of fundamental if you want to go and be a fighter in the UFC. You need to have been in there for a certain period of time as well before you could actually get in the octagon. So he suggested because of that, that Brock has absolutely no interest at the moment, at least, of going to the UFC. Of course, as we all know, Brock Lesnar is Brock Lesnar. And if he wants to do that, then you bet your bollocks that he's going to go and do that whenever he fancies. It might not be right now, but it might be somewhere down the line. However... As you have mentioned, Andy Murray, the tasty thing here is, of course, that if he doesn't go and do UFC, that leaves him open to go and do anything he wants in the wrestling world, which I guess everybody on this video is kind of excited. Maybe could be AEW, but probably WWE. Yeah, yeah. so with uh, the UFC off the table and with 
AEW, you know, a long shot, and with New Japan probably not wanting to do business with him again, <laughs> I think it's safe to say that Brock Lesnar is on his way to Impact Wrestling. Guaranteed. That's there you are. You happening. can take that to the bank right now. <laughs> Tweet about it. Put it on Reddit or something. Whatever. I just made it up. I don't care. Uh, let's roll on uh, to more Tony Khan stuff from last night's media call, which you know was an interesting affair from start to finish. He's a very affable man and a very good salesman, like I said. And part of his salesman shtick here was when he was talking, he was asked a question about what he felt his biggest highs and lows are, or have been as uh, running AEW so far. The biggest high, one of the biggest highs, was the Double or Nothing pay-per-view, which went down in May. He called it a bastion of ingenuity in terms of how they put it together and how he felt that the pay-per-view came off and the widespread critical acclaim it received from a number of publications. He said specifically as well, Tony Khan, that cheeky little scamp. Uh, he said, well, here comes your headline, guys. Uh, basically, I felt that Double or Nothing kicked the crap out of WrestleMania 36. He said he felt that AEW just simply had the better pay-per-view, the better big pay-per-view than WWE did. Now, he did acknowledge that AEW had the advantage of going down something like four, four to six weeks uh, later into the global health crisis, so things had settled down a bit more, they settled into more of a groove and so forth. But he also mentioned that even at the time of Double or Nothing going down, uh, they were still the only major wrestling promotion in the United States running a full testing uh, program and so forth. So. Tony Khan, uh, yeah, he just continued. He said it was a great high for him uh, that whole weekend. He emphasized how proud he was of what they were able to do. And, uh, you know, all these things are subjective, right? You can prefer whatever show you, you, you want. It doesn't ultimately matter. Um, but, you know, a little bit of cheerleading here from the sugar man sprinkling that sweet goodness all over your Twitter feeds that will probably be replied to with a bunch of salt um, because that's how these things tend to happen. But, you know... Uh, I like both shows, personally. Um, I think that if you kind of trimmed some stuff from WrestleMania and maybe combined it from two three-hour shows into one three-hour show, which you don't want to do because you want everyone to get a payday and so forth. But if you did that, maybe the quality levels would be pretty similar indeed. Um, but man, that stadium stampede was the most fun I've had in uh, my entire life. Not not true, obviously, <laughs> but, it, but it was a blast, is what I'm saying. I'll be curious to hear what Mrs. Murray had to say about that. But what I, <laughs> what I will say is, though, that's the uh, stadium stampede, genuinely. Like, that whole pay-per-view, just... It was the first time in a long time I felt, like, really, really electrically energised by a pay-per-view. Like, that hasn't happened in ages. And WrestleMania, I thought they did a great job given what they had at their disposal. But I think... Dare I say it, I think Tony Khan might just kind of be within his rights. I know he's obviously just trying to get a headline out there, which is great. And more like more power to him for embracing that instead of trying to run away from it, I guess. But yeah, this is good stuff. And I guess he's not wrong to a certain extent. But we might as well stick with this because taking jabs at the opposition is something Tony Khan has done there. Well, Chris Jericho is right there behind him by his <laughs> side, which well, maybe even in front of him at this point, because he has been doing an interview with Busted Open Radio and he has had a few choice words to say regarding the Wednesday Night Wars between NXT and AEW. Now, as we all are aware, there's a potential chance that NXT may not be returning to the Wednesday Night War slot because obviously they all had to change their dates and times but, uh, with regards to like NBA interference and stuff so to get themselves good ratings and as we've seen both shows have probably done better off like not opposing one another the numbers have gone up well certainly in fact on both cases but exactly how you'd want to see it wrestling in general is up which is great that's what you want and Jericho was talking with uh, Busted Open Radio and he said about the potential that NXT may not return to Wednesday nights he said they should retreat they should they should retweet no they shouldn't they should retreat they should move to it any other <laughs> night. Get away from us. You guys have got a great program. Why would you want to sacrifice sacrifice your own ratings just to be spiteful and petty going head to head with AEW? We're not going anywhere. Put on anything you want. We'll continue to beat you. He would go on to say, get your head out of your rear end and just worry about the product the same way we worry about ours. Something I highly agree with. And it's a smart move business-wise. They lost. There's nothing wrong with conceding defeat and not worrying about AEW because you can't stop us. And as somebody who has been in NXT, I enjoy both shows, of course, but was an NXT fan long before an AEW fan, this is something I think has been fundamentally the problem, is that AEW have continued to do their own product, which has been fantastic. They've focused on that, whereas NXT has sacrificed any of its identity, I think, at the moment, and has really been morphed into a show that is all about ratings, that is all about trying to stop AEW, that is all about 
trying to be counterproductive against AEW, and I think it has hurt them quite a lot, to be honest. And Andy Murray, it would be no surprise to see them actually move full time away to Tuesday nights or Thursday nights or wherever they might be going, and just keep well out of the way of AEW. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. Um, I think that continuing with the Wednesday Night Wars is ultimately fruitless for the mm. wrestling business as a whole. Um, AEW did its best number uh, since, uh, what was it? 15th of March, I think it was. 15th of March, mm. you're exactly right. Uh, NXT has did something like its second best number of 2020 yeah. on Tuesday nights. Hey man, like, you know, we've all had our fun with the petty stuff in the Wednesday Night Wars. That's been a lot of fun. We've had a blast, but for the good of the business, I think it's time to move over. Um, you gotta love Chris Jericho, man. He's he's so Chris Jericho yeah. at times, using terminology like retreat and run away. Get, he knows get, what he's doing. Get your head out of your rear end. I thought that was fantastic, but to be honest, I mean, you probably got the numbers better than I have in terms of like, They've just dominated that key market that everybody talks yeah. about, the key demographic, which Jericho has literally turned into his own gimmick at this point, being the demo god. I just think if, if for most of us, like I know a lot of people want to pick a side, but if you're like myself who likes both products, you want to see both products doing well. And I think potentially that means not going head to head because really it means everybody gets to watch everything and there's nobody loses anything. But I think if we're all being honest with ourselves, AEW have absolutely walked it. They've consistently beaten NXT in terms of ratings and that demographic, most importantly. And it's it's hard to argue against, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I don't see the counter argument. I see people talking about DVRs, but DVR views mean a lot less to advertisers mm. because you have a fast forward button. And on top of that, man, it's fun to just watch wrestling as it airs live. It, you're in exactly. the moment. You can go on Twitter and you can banter with people and block trolls. It's a good time. Um, let's get to your Twitter questions here. We've got one today from everyone's favourite misfit, welcome back, uh, who asks, AEW have a tendency of having big names debut in these casino battle royales, usually the last entrant. If they are going to continue that at all out, who do you think is getting the 21 spot? Uh, they suggest Pac. Pa I'm going to be boring and agree that Pac is my pick as well. I think it'd be awesome. I do too, but in, in the, what's the word, in the good nature of our news video, I think it's going to be Brock. Lesnar! I mean, it's definitely yes. not going to be Brock Lesnar. I would like to see it be packed, but if it's not, why not dream? Chuck Brock in there, imagine the chaos. Yeah, in conclusion, it's going to be Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> um, second question here comes from Mark Solid. Thank you very much for sending a question, Mark, who asks, uh, with AEW getting closer to 1 million viewers, do you think that if NXT moves, that eventually all major wrestling shows will be doing over 1 million viewers per week? I think there's a very good chance, you know. AEW is creeping very close to that number, 928,000 this week. I think if they have a hot pay-per-view this week, there's a very strong chance that they will be able to push even closer uh, to that. AEW, uh, sorry, NXT is something like 150,000 off, but things are improving greatly uh, without competition. I think it would only be a matter of months, and you know, everyone, more than one people, one million, more than more one, than one I hope so. <laughs> more than me, uh, more than a million people watching every show, that sounds damn good. Well, we used to say quite frequently, like, we would like to see uh, across the board, like a two million between the two shows, that would be great. And I think we're creeping closer to that. And I honestly, at this point, I've, it just, I think it's the toxicity that comes on social media from the Wednesday Night War that's kind of just a bit boring and nobody can have yeah. any opinions. You can't like both shows, you have to like one or the other. And ultimately, why? When you could just enjoy them both. And if it's better for everybody, I think it will be personally. And I think keep them as far away as possible. And hopefully that means NXT might even actually return to its roots a little bit, which would be nice. That would be delightful. Mm. Our final question here comes from Luke Sutton. It's a tremendous question, this. Thank you, Luke, who asks, uh, I have one question about Tuesday's NXT. Who was driving the forklift ah. for Fandango and Swerve during the street fight? I mean, who was this and why did they do it? Now, my answer is a man who was in the building every week for NXT. He's a real man's man. Oh. He's no stranger to <laughs> manual labor, as we know. <laughs> It's William Regal, of course, of course. Who else are you going to call when you need some construction stuff done than a real man's man with his hammer and his helmet and his forklift? That's who it was. Who have you got, Adam Nichols? I just love this idea of William Regal driving the forklift with the same expression he has on his face when he's about to say war games and just saying, FORKLIFT! Just, <laughs> just driving towards the problem. Brilliant stuff. But I, if I've got a different suggestion for you, Andy Murray. A man who was once in NXT, perhaps, and is associated with a tag team 
that would fit the bill quite nicely for this because if you were going to define what a forklift truck is, you could probably say it's a piece of heavy machinery. And I think who else would I like to see driving that forklift with a massive stake in one hand? <laughs> Mandy Rose on the show that he must be driving with his feet at this point. It's Otis and he's shouting, Eh, yeah, fuck this! And he's <laughs> flying towards the problem. That's who I think it was. And you can take that to the bank as well. And you know what? After those answers to that wonderful question, we don't need no and finally, because how could it get better exactly. than that? Exactly. Thank you for joining us today. You can follow us on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. Send us your Twitter questions. Your abuse, whatever you want to send us. I will block you if you send me abuse, though, you little rascal. Uh, you can follow Adam Nicholas on Twitter at... It's Adam Nicholas. You can follow me. Can you follow Andy Murray? Have you already given yours? Or I can't remember. I've felt I the daydream there. <laughs> I haven't, but you can follow me at it at, at I almost said it's Andy Murray. That's that's not my Everybody tag. Everybody does this. Adam Cleary does this all the time. <laughs> you can follow me at Andy H Murray. The H stands for Harold Schumacher. Remember that time you kicked that dude in the head? That wasn't very nice, Harold. Well, you bully. <laughs> you bully. Bye, bye, Harold. Goodbye, bye. Harold.